everyone. My name is Alyssa Hasty, and I'm a professor in the Molecular Physiology and Biophysics Department. And I'd like to share with you some of the data that we are working on in the field of immunometabolism research. So overall, what my lab is interested in is why does obesity increase risk of cardiometabolic diseases? I think all of you are pretty well aware that obesity has become an epidemic in our society, as well as around the world. And a part of that is because of the increase in adipose tissue mass expansion. And one of the things we know in the expansion of adipose tissue is that the, the fat cells themselves, called adipocytes, get a lot larger, and that is how the adipose tissue expands. But something that was discovered just over a decade ago is that actually you have an increase in immune cells in the obese adipose tissue compared to the lean. I've depicted these here, the, the immune cells in the lean adipose tissue as M2-like. These are macrophages that are relatively anti-inflammatory. Whereas the green cells you can see in the obese adipose tissue are forming in these structures that we call crown-like structures, and these M1-like macrophages are pro-inflammatory. So the obese adipose tissue generally has a more pro-inflammatory phenotype. And this is important because inflammation changes the way that cells respond, respond to insulin. So what does this mean? Practically speaking, when you eat a meal, your body increases the levels of glucose in your blood and wants to bring those back down into homeostasis. And it does this by telling your pancreas to secrete more insulin. Insulin then talks to various different tissues in the body. It talks to your muscle, telling it to take up glucose out of the system. It talks to your liver, telling the liver to stop making glucose. And what it does tells the adipose tissue is to not release fatty acids, that there's glucose in supply to use as an energy source, so to hold on and store all of the lipid that the adipose tissue has. What happens if a tissue becomes insulin resistant is that it doesn't listen to those signals anymore. So the muscle doesn't take up glucose properly, the liver um, doesn't stop secreting glucose, and the adipose tissue actually continues to release fatty acids when it should be holding on to them. And those fatty acids can end up in the muscle or the liver or the pancreas or the brain and induce further insulin resistance at those sites. So the fact that inflammatory cytokines secreted by these M1-like macrophages induce induces insulin resistance in the adipocytes is something that we are very concerned about because we think that that's part of the reason why obesity increases risk of diabetes. So I've shown you these macrophages in the adipose tissue, but our field is actually interested in many different immune cells that are also present in the adipose tissue and other things that are going on in the fat. So you probably noticed on this slide I have a lot of these little red dots. These little red dots are indicating iron. It turns out that in obesity, the adipocytes themselves accumulate excess iron, and that excess iron also induces insulin resistance in the obese adipose tissue. So one of the things that my laboratory is interested in is how these M2-like macrophages might be controlling iron content in the adipose tissue, potentially to protect the adipocytes from becoming iron overloaded. So we have ongoing studies in that area. In addition, um, if you have taken any immunology courses, you've probably learned of a lot of different cells, immune cells in the innate immune system, such as eosinophils, neutrophils, mast cells, dendritic cells. All of these immune cells are also present in the adipose tissue. And one of these that we are particularly interested in are the eosinophils. And as you can see, I've depicted here that there are more eosinophils in the lean compared to the obese adipose tissue. And it's thought that eosinophils are actually protective and help maintain the homeostasis of the tissue, and that you really would want to have more eosinophils in the obese adipose tissue if you could induce that. And so one of the students in my laboratory is studying how eosinophils impact adipose tissue function and trying to develop novel ways of increasing the numbers of eosinophils in the obese compared to the lean fat. In addition to these um, innate immune cells, there are also cells of the adaptive immune system, B cells I'm not showing you here, but also T cells. And like the other cells I was describing, they change in their proportions and in their inflammatory status when you go from the lean to the obese setting. So you have more of the pro-inflammatory T cell subsets in obesity. 
This is particularly interesting to me and to other investigators in the field of immunometabolism research because it suggests that there are secondary immune responses that are occurring in adipose tissue, that you may have some antigens that are exposed in the obese setting that are inducing a more pro-inflammatory response in that tissue. And if you think about it, somebody with extreme obesity can have even 50% of their body mass be adipose tissue. And if that 50% of their body mass is in a heightened state of inflammation, it could have profound effects on how the rest of the body is responding to this obese phenotype. So finally, my lab is also interested in what happens during weight loss. Can you reverse this inflammatory phenotype if you go from an obese back to a lean setting? And furthermore, what happens in weight cycling? So many humans who are um, trying to lose weight actually end up gaining and losing and gaining and losing weight as they yo-yo diet. And it turns out that that's actually worse for them metabolically than if they would have sustained a bit of an elevated body weight. And so we're interested in how that um, weight cycling impacts the adipose tissue as well. And we see that there's a heightened secondary immune response in the adipose tissue and weight cycled um, animals compared to the control animals that we study. So these are the main things that my laboratory is studying. Many people in my field are interested in all of these different immune cells and why they're present in adipose tissue, how they impact the adipocytes themselves, and how they change in the obese compared to the lean setting. It's a very exciting field, just over a decade old, and there's a lot more that we have to learn about immunity and metabolism in this new field of immunometabolism. Thank you so much. I hope you've learned something and enjoyed this talk today.